versus SKT, our final playoff match here in Champion Spring. It's been a long season, and we're only two matches away from crowning a champion. There's that Cassiopeia band against Easy Hoon. Yeah, that's no surprise. He's nope. He's been excellent on that champion. LeBlanc will have to be banned. That is not an Easy Hoon champion at all. Lulu. And there is Lulu. So they're trying to target Easy Hoon right here. Remember that he has played three out of his last five games on that Lulu. So they're trying to pigeonhole him a bit. Do they want to force him onto the Vladimir or the Ziggs, perhaps? You know, now are we going to start thinking about top and uh, ADC bans from here on out, perhaps? Well, both of these teams have really liked to ban out Callista. CJ banned out Callista in all three games against Jin Air. Yeah. Haven't really wanted to play it, but SK Telecom has put a high priority on first picking that when it's been available. Okay, and there's a Thresh ban against Mad Life as well, too. He is absolutely terrifying on that champion, and CJ hasn't been afraid to pick a champion for Mad Life in the first round, too. So Callista, Callista ban. Fourth game in a row that they've banned Callista now. They really don't want to play with it, but are we going to see an Urgot ban here? Is that Urgot going to be a first pick? Uh, no jungle bans yet either. Of course, Nunu could be a little bit of a pocket ban up against Ambition. Yeah, and in the top lane, Hecarim, of course, a huge, huge threat for both of these players, but especially Shy. I don't know, Marin's been real good on Hecarim too. Yeah, we're XI banned, okay. That's surprising to me, actually. Well, yeah, we talked about how Ambition, you know, he used to play a lot of Rek'Sai, but it's been a long time. And both of these teams have, they've both been banning Rek'Sai in their matches. Yeah. Well, I would love to see Bard first picked here. I mean, it is 5.7, he got a lot of buffs, but I don't know. I still don't know if we're going to see any Bard here. No, I think that we may have to wait for the finals for that one. Obviously, yeah. he's a very complicated champion in terms of teamwork, so. Uh, even though I do think he's in a very good place in terms of balance right now, and a lot of the pro players that I've spoken to agree. Urgot. Uh, getting that coordination down with a champion with a kit that unique can be challenging. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see it, though. We'll have to wait a bit longer to take that magical journey, I guess. Well, people have been taking the magical journey over in LPL, but it, it really hasn't <laughs> been working out very well. <laughs> the journey has turned into a nightmare. I'm not convinced anybody really knows how to play it as a team yet. It's, well, it's going to be a really tough one for sure. So maybe this Gragas pickup, Ambition played very well, but this would, of course, leave the Nunu open for Ambition. And out of the two, I would rather give him the Gragas than the Nunu. What do you think? He's got a 21 KDA on Nunu. Yeah, you Gragas, don't give Ambition Nunu. Gragas is so strong right now, though, and he does put some early pressure down. Yeah, still. And the Hecarim doesn't surprise me at all for Marin. Go ahead, get him on that champion, and he has been preferring when it's been available to be picked. And yeah. Gragas, Gragas provides just really nice early ganking, and Sivir is oh, actually okay. going to be taken. You know, I wonder if they're running Tom here in the first game because he plays things out a little bit more aggressively than Bengi, and with Ambition loving to come into your jungle with Nunu, take your camps. You need someone maybe with a little bit more uh, fighting spirit, I would say. Tom loves to scrap with the enemy yes, jungler. He's he does. really a scrappy player. He doesn't give up anything for free. Uh, he's very fun to watch as a jungler. Yeah. Sometimes he's still a little bit unpolished as to when he should be invading. He does does take risks at times and doesn't work the best with Wolf yet in terms of warding, but uh, he does create a whole hell of a lot of pressure just by constantly fighting your the enemy jungler with these tanks. Well, the amazing thing, too, is considering where he is in his career, for him to be this good already, that's the real incredible stuff, is that you know, you would expect a player that was as new as Tom to be a lot more rough around the edges than his play looks. Well, right here, the Urgot, we don't know whether this is going mid or AD yet. Now, both of these teams prefer to have Urgot in the AD carry position. Right. And also, it's worth noting that uh, Marin has played a lot of solo queue top rise ever since we saw some of those buffs a few patches ago, so yeah, I've been... got a lot stronger. Yeah, and Easy Hoon's always been a great Rise player as well, so they could take this as a flex pick right now and then see what they can do with it later on in the game. We haven't seen Rise picked in Korea in a long time, but that doesn't mean it can't happen now. The Janna, of course, for Wolf, very standard pick, but they're going to switch it over to Hecarim for Marin. And are we going to see Space maybe pick up this Hyper Carry in Jinx, perhaps? That would mean it was a mid Urgot. Yeah, they don't have any magic damage in that case, so that's a bit concerning. A unless bit. they take a Lissandra in the top side. Now, Shai's Lissandra hasn't been awesome in the past. It's been pretty mediocre compared to Marin's Lissandra. Could be a top Nautilus in the support Volibear. Oh. 
Savannah would add some more magic damage, some nice AoE magic damage into the composition. Yeah, Shy looked good on uh, Shivana in their final game against yeah. Janair last week. Ooh, love it. Azir for Coco, cool. Love it. So Azir, of course, you have that blood boil from Nunu in the late game, so you can choose if you want to blood boil the Urgot or the Azir. Gives you some flexibility. Uh, with your carries, you can blood boil whoever has more items or whoever's in a power spike at that point in the game. Yeah. And Shivana will come back for Shy. Marin has Ignite at the moment instead of the Smite, hmm. whereas Shy is looking to take the Smite in this game. Now, SK Telecom has a lot of tools to break up the enemy composition between the Gragas Explosive Cask and the Hecarim Onslaught of Shadows. Okay, Marin switching to Smite. Yep. And it wouldn't surprise me at all to see the Vladimir. Well, with the ghost locked in for easy, and I think it probably will be. And I, I'm actually a little bit surprised that nobody is picking up Ziggs. It seemed like such a strong choice right now. It'd be, it, it'd be strong in this composition too, but yeah. Vladimir, Vladimir also has been such a good champion for Easy Hoon in terms of his more passive laning farm style and then coming in the late game and team fighting very well. So it will be the Vladimir this game. All right. So interesting, pretty, pretty fascinating actually composition from SK Telecom just in terms of their ability to disperse the enemy team and uh, with the ultimates from Hecarim, Gragas, and Janna, as well as their very quick response. Of course, they have that ghost in the mid lane and the Sivir ultimate as well, so they will be able to create picks. Isn't that kind of counterintuitive with the Vladimir, though? Um, well, I mean, it depends on where the Vlad is. I mean, if you hit, if you hit everybody with the explosive cast, they're going to have to group again, and Vladimir can be in the middle of that with Tides of Blood. I suppose. So. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. It's definitely going to be hard to use properly, that's yeah. for sure. You really have to make sure that your timing of your ultimates are good to maximize your damage. True enough. Well, CJ, on the other hand, I'm really curious to see if Ambition is going to be able to continue doing what he's done against a player like Tom on that Gragas. CJ has really been the team lately to control every dragon, too. And CJ running with a composition that is very tank focused. Yep. And it's going to require Coco to farm up and be that big damage source in the late game. But they've got a lot of <laughs> they've got a lot of zone control with Azir and Nunu. Should be interesting. That's right. Well, here we go. CJ versus SK Telecom. Who's going on to face G in the finals? Let's find out. Game number one starts now. Coco paying tribute to the OGN theme song bird with his Azir pick this game. CJ Antis versus SK Telecom. Our first game of the final match in the gauntlet to Ooh. decide who goes to the finals. Man's excited tonight, so easy. Hoon I'm excited tonight. We'll be taking boots first just to try and dodge out some of those sand soldiers. Meanwhile, health crystals start from Shy. Smites on both of our top laners, to be expected. You know what they say, Monty. Those boots are made for turning into a pool of blood, kind of, <laughs> kind of floating around. I think that's what they say. Yeah, I, that's Many about right. That's what I've always heard. I, that, Famous song. Yeah, yeah, of course. These boots are made for turning into a pool of blood and kind of floating around. Yeah. Catchy, you know. It's got a nice. <laughs> it flows so nicely. No pun intended. <laughs> <there>. Actually. <laughs> And Everybody's heard about the bird. <laughs> bird, 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 bird. <laughs> Got to dance with your soldiers. That's right. Because that uh, inspires them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That soldier went back underground, and now he's, like, down there telling everyone else how inspiring it is that the boss called him up to, you know, dance a little bit. <laughs> All right, lane swap coming in. Bang and Wolf wanting to head into the top side. Meanwhile, Marin will be starting at Grump alongside Tom. Three people in the bottom side for CJ. Right now we'll see where those Krugs go. Looks like Ambition will be taking them more than likely, but they're not going to get a lane freeze right here. Giant enemy crab got. Nope, Ambition will give them up, so uses that smite. So CJ really wanted that 2v2 lane, trying to harass the short range of that Sivir. They're not going to get it. Yeah. And we do see already Wolf on that side of the map, starting to harass Shy. Shy sees him with the spirit after smiting, though, and will hit level two. Wolf couldn't 
kill the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just couldn't bring himself to do it at the end, you know? It really, it's like yeah. murder at that point. It, that's that's what it gets thats what it gets up to. If you are a wolf and you kill all the other wolves, that's why War, War, Warwick is wanted in the wolf kingdom. Seriously, man. How messed up is that they made a wolf a jungle go. that kills wolves? Coco exhausted. They're going to try to get a gank on him early. There's a flash. There's a knockup. And they could have maybe got a little bit more damage on him, but you know, with the lack of wards, it was a bit dangerous for uh, Easy to go any farther up, I suppose. I think you're happy just getting the flash yeah. out right there. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that Coco burned the flash instead of just using the barrier. Um, huh. Because, I mean, Vlad doesn't have any offensive summoners. It looks like a bit of a nerve issue right there. Marin's just going to teleport down into the bottom side right now. Yeah. Double jungle still continuing for CJ. But yeah, that, that gank was. Early Vlad and Janna, not something that has a lot of kill pressure. So I am, I am surprised Coco decided to flash instead of, uh, instead of using the barrier there. Wow! And either Mad Life's Nautilus or Wolf's Janna will receive their first loss ever tonight. They're both undefeated on those champions coming into this game. Exciting times. Yeah, no kidding. Mad Life looking to make a play here in the mid lane. Easy Hoon coming up, and there's ambition. Cool. Tom's there. Yep. Oh, the anchor misses, but Tom uh, was close by, so. Unfortunately, they only got the ghost. Good play by, by Easy Hoon just to dodge that. But yeah. neither of these neither of these mid jungle combinations really has any kill pressure early. So just trying to see if they can bait out some summoner spells right there. That's pretty much all you can hope for. A pretty small advantage, but who knows if that'll mat matter in just a little bit. We do see SK Telecom moving down, taking the scuttle crab so that CJ Antis will have a harder time doing that dragon. Well, that's, you know, they've kind of made that their bread and butter over a lot of games now is those early dragons with uh, Ambitions Nunu. And so you can tell SKT's been doing their homework. You know, they know what CJ likes to do in the early game, and so they want control over that Rift Scholar and bot. Yeah, well, still only level one. He's been doing a lot of that roaming he can pretty get, early here. He can get it all back with some kills, don't worry. <laughs> Just yeah. level through kills only. That's what I do. <laughs> Sometimes I end the game at level three. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's usually like level 30. No exaggeration. The game unlocks more levels the more bloodthirsty you are. That's how mine works. It's true. So, so. Really even start so far. Yeah. Pretty expected, however. I mean, we've got a farm mid lane. Both of these top laners are trying to get into that super tanky late game, and Tom, the one with no, no presence. Flash. Okay. No flash Ambition's for Coco, he's coming in, doesn't get the knockup. Coco takes some damage, but yeah, Ambition right there. Throw out those snowballs. <laughs> wow, these, Tom. These, these gangs are so sad for the teams. <laughs> It's like every time this happens, I feel like the jungler is secretly saying I've made a terrible mistake. That was just funny because Vlad is, is of course, so weak in that early game, especially without... Oh. Goodbye. Oh, okay. Scary. So, uh, you know, even though Tom has the, is the better ganking jungler, Coco has more kill pressure a little bit than this Vladimir early on. Just even with no flash, too. It all rounds out pretty evenly. Yeah, pretty much. Meanwhile, Bang has been able to do uh, a lot of farming up in the top lane. Nice little CS lead over Mad Life, or uh, well, especially over Mad Life, but over Space really is a more important CS lead. I have to admit. I just see Mad Life on the screen, and suddenly, you know, it just—that's what the game is about for me. It's about Mad Life. I'm not ashamed to admit it. All right, Tom, going for the chilling smite here. Give him a little bit of extra pressure on those lanes, but. Not really a good opportunity to gank anywhere on the map, as long as we don't have the 2v2 or the 1v1. Yeah. CS leads in mid uh, and bottom, actually, for SK Telecom early on. Barnes just going to take the Gromp. Yeah, but good back timing, actually, in favor of SK Telecom because Marin doesn't have a lot of HP, and now he's actually going to be able to farm that wave yeah, thanks no to kidding. the recall timing. So. He's just going to push it off a little bit, collect some extra experience as it slow pushes its way back out. Now, Marin is recalling right now as well, too, and I feel like CJ is anticipating that because they just did pin, uh, ping Dragon. Do you think maybe they want to yeah. make a push for it while they Marin's did, back? But that's why Marin went back so quickly after oh, that one, one wave. But he yeah. actually is going to teleport to the top side. We do huh. see Sivir. That's a really good swap timing there from SK Telecom. Uh, they didn't lose hardly any minions 
in terms of experience or gold. And at the same time, the wave was caught perfectly by Mara in the top oh, side. Mad, Mad Life. Life getting pushed around a little bit here. Goes back in onto Tom. There's a pool of blood. He will play use as well. Coco and Bang joining the fight as well. They flash in. Mad Life getting very low. And he's going to go down first. Blood going to Tom. And Mission in a bit of trouble as well. Coco on the retreat. And so SKT will take the first blood on the Mad Life. Mad Life going a little bit too far forward to maybe get some warding down, and he paid for it. And Bang there, too, coming up really big with the fast movement up into the lane. And that was, you have to be careful about being in the river right there because the Sivir came down into lane, had the pressure advantage, so was able to walk into the river faster, especially uh, with that on the hunt. Tom has oh, to be I don't know, really Tom. careful. It's a, he's going to get a lot of damage. Drink like your life depends on it. Okay, he is good. Yeah, it's just drink actually. Drink responsibly. Easy Hoon went down into the jungle to put a couple wards in right there. So Easy Hoon actually using that bit of solo time. Now, as we watch this game, I mean, both of these compositions are going to scale pretty well overall, but CJ probably has a slight late game advantage. Uh, the, the tankier they get, of course, especially against, uh, with a couple of frozen hearts against Hecarim and Sivir, they're going to be in a really good position. And uh, you gotta like that late game Azir with a blood boil a bit more, I think, than the Vladimir. So probably subtle scaling advantage to CJ Entis, but not by a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, a big team fight could swing the pendulum in uh, either team's favor too. Pretty much at any point in the game, it seems like, as long as it stays close. Yeah, kill going over to Tom too. So actually not that impactful that Mad Life died there on the first blood, but a good punishment from SK Telecom just based on the minion wave positions in the river. You have to be so careful about that against top teams who yeah. can play the map so well. Those little mistakes, there are very, very specific timing windows where you're less vulnerable to collapses like that. And if you're coordinated enough, you can get caught like SK Telecom. And SK Telecom has shown that they're very good at collapsing with Sivir recently. In, in fact, building comps based around creating picks with Sivir. Bang, of course, had that huge game against the GE Tigers. Right. Mission grabbing the red right before Tom gets there. Oh wait, did he get it? He Tom did. Got he it. smited it away. Wow. Wow, that's that's huge. That's Tom. quite good. Uh, ambition smotes a little early. Yeah. I guess we know whose smiting skills are superior <laughs> now, don't we? At least for that one, ambition has has to consume. So we'll have that's that. True. We'll have that advantage later, even if. Eh, I mean, Both of these junglers oh. have quite a bit of burst. Oh, Tom gets grabbed by Mad Life Space in there as well, too. But with the bot lane close by, yeah, I don't know if they can chase this. They're going to try. Ambition's there. Bang has to back away. It looks like, yeah, Wolf moving into the jungle as well, too. So, Tom, huh. a little bit a little bit lucky right there. That's That was one of those times, just like we saw with Mad Life getting caught out in the river earlier, where the Urgot and the Nautilus could respond just a little bit faster. Yeah. Be careful in those scenarios. Shy gonna start proxy farming now that he knows Tom is in bottom. Yep, might as well. Oh, there's the all in in bottom though. Nice knock up on the Mad Life Tom there as well. The ultimate uh, use, but it's spell shield by Bang. But there's a nice knock up. Mad Life turning around to try to get out work position oh, reverser. Shy. Does anything happen? Oh, the Shy came down as well. A kill on each side. Shy managed to take out Bang. Tom in the meanwhile running for his life here. Bang got the kill on Mad Life before he went down. There's Coco, Coco from the Dragon Pit gets the kill over the wall. And CJ can just transition right into this dragon, too, it looks like. And Marin not teleporting right there, yeah. actually. So CJ able to turn it around quite quickly. Not sure what was going on in terms of, we'll have to see where his positioning on the map was for that one, but not responding to that pretty aggressive attempt there from SK Telecom, no follow-up. Oh, you know, the ward that uh, SK Telecom has in that bot lane seems like it'd be in a very good place for Marin to pop out of as well, too. Yeah, Marin was there. Surprising. And look at that, too. I mean, Tom missed the explosive cast. That was pretty important as well. And oh, Shai I see what happened. Getting in. So Marin is at his turret right now. Marin tried to stop uh, Shy from teleporting down, yeah. but he wasn't able to do it. And so Shy had already gotten off a full teleport before Marin could even start his. And I think yeah. that's why he chose just to not go. It was too late uh, for him anyway. That's smart, especially because yeah. everybody was already back under turret. Yep. Uh, so don't necessarily want to waste that teleport. At least now you can have an opportunity for the next five minutes or four minutes or so to make a teleport play in response. But first Dragon will go over to CJ Entis. They've been so good about that. 
Uh, they're still in the last month or so. They're still behind on gold, though. Not by much. Here comes Tom. Shy, of course, you know, no flash. Does not have that summoner. Oh, there's bait. Onslaught of Shadows used. Shy immediately trying to run around to try brush. Nobody else there. Nice strike. It's a center of the wall. Wow. I didn't even know you could jump that wall at that point. Oh, meanwhile, action down the bot lane. Bang. Knocked up. Flashes away. Wolf trying to run interference a little bit here. Position reverser was used by space. But no ganks there. This game is suddenly action-packed right now. And Wolf still is in six, which is why Ooh, they couldn't yeah. actually pursue that, as well as Mad Life having the depth charge just come off cooldown right there. Yep. Oh, there's the flash. Goes into Wolf bang. Wolf six. And there's the ult used on the bang. Can Ambition get there? Nope, not quite. Wolf hit six right as that skirmish started. Otherwise, yeah. I don't think Mad Life would have thrown his ult right there, but worth a shot. How oh, easy and getting poked really hard by uh, Coco here. He's got enough sustain, though, that he should be able to deal with that. And Tom made a bit of a mistake on that gank up there, trying to walk around instead of uh, attempting to cut uh, cut Shy off from his retreat path. So walking around that little island of rock right there, I think was the best call. Well, kills even up either way. SK Telecom still with a tiny little gold lead. Oh, Wolf gets a little bit caught here. Space has to pop that ult, or rather Wolf pops the ult. There's a flash. There's a flash from Space to pick up that kill. Flash is used, but CJ definitely coming out on top of that one. Tom not quite there to back him up in time, and yeah. Wolf just gets straight up caught out trying to auto a pink ward. Well, Easy Hoon taking a lot more damage as well, Ambition. Coming into lane to push him away a bit. Mars decided to pink ward up the enemy jungle and start taking away the Gromps, so the counter jungling strategy is beginning, Doa. Yeah. Wow, this game has been incredibly even so far, but Coco really doing a lot of damage to the turret, getting that blood boil on a pass through from Ambition. Tons of counter jungling from the top laners and the junglers in this game. As we can see, both players trying to deny each other as much as they possibly can. Yeah. We're kind of seeing the uh, top smite meta this is operating at its uh, highest level, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually having a hard time keeping up with it myself, considering we have four of these players in each other's jungles, proxy farming for a lot of this game. I don't think that's ever happened to you before, too. <laughs> I think that's a first. That's Rito, what are you doing? This I love top it. smite thing. There's so many more tactical options you have. It's true that it can get very snowball-y because as soon as one top laner gets ahead and starts just getting in your jungle all the time, then right. I think that is a problem. But wow, and when things are even, it down. sure is fun to watch. Yeah, Easy Hoon, he's just, he doesn't have that wave clear in the early levels really to do much of anything about that. Only a couple points right now into his Tides of Blood. So yeah. he's got to wait for a few more levels before he becomes super efficient at that wave clearing. And the poke, too. Coco's just continuing to drive the wave home into Tier 2 now. Yep, that's uh, that's starting to get to be a bit of a scary lead now for CJ in that mid lane. Two towers going down immediately, so big oh, gold yeah. swing in favor of CJ and just Shy's proxy farming paying off. The Dragon up in a minute 30, and uh, both top laners have their teleports. It's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that, because that the fight that could ensue from that could be very, very big for either one of these teams. I think the most impressive thing about CJ series against Jin Air was how hard and aggressively they drove home leads, Stella. Yeah, they closed really cleanly. Beautiful closure in those games. Didn't waste a lot of time. Tower dove exactly when they had just enough power to be able to pull it off and didn't give Jin Air any breathing room in the mid and late game. And yeah. now that CJ has started to push all of these lanes, I mean, pretty much all of SK Telecom is getting their turrets chipped right now. They're, I'm scared for SKT that CJ might just do that same thing again, snowball very rapidly. Well, SKT definitely on the back foot here. And well, you can see CJ very confident. Coco going as far as to put up his turret in the mid lane and immediately continue to push that power spike against Easy Hoon before Easy Hoon gets more wave clear. Yeah, I mean, SK Telecom has looked very good recently, but CJ has looked better every time we've seen him in the last month or so. And, and game one already looks just a little bit better than what we saw them do last week, too. So if they can keep this up, this could be a, a very, very close match. Yeah, questionable recall from Coco. Well, with Dragon coming up now, yeah, I don't know if you want to do that. 
That's quite odd, actually. They may just want to give this one up if they think the fight is just too close. Because Coco and Space it. are not going to be there. I think his ambition can't get close enough with expl explosive cask unless he has a flash for it. I feel like they can just Sivir ult and turn on this if they want to, too. Yeah, CJ just feeling that one's too dangerous, so. Interesting. So yeah. Coco pushing so far forward did cause him to recall at a kind of weird time right there. Hmm. And then giving up that dragon. Apparently oh. they are just not concerned. They wanted that item advantage. We'll see what they do with it. Oh, Shy finds Marin in the jungle. And Marin, though, he's Hecarim. Should be able to get away without any issues. And he does. Twice as many legs as Shivana to run with. Oh, here we go. Over the wall comes Tom. Ambition could be in a little bit of trouble here. Space tanking turret angle right now. Ambition ults gets knocked out of it, though. Mad Life. Oh, he misses the anchor. That was a flash from Tom to get out of it. Marin's going to teleport down, as will Shy. Bang. Chipping away at Shivana as CJ moves back into the jungle. Uh, no way for SKT to really respond to that, though, because yeah. Coco's able to walk there without the mid lane turret so efficiently. Whoa. They're still Tom, going. Easy hoot. Tom just recalled as well, too. It's a 4v5 ambition in big trouble. CJ picks up that kill onto uh, Nunu, or rather SKT does. Meanwhile, Exhaust down onto Shy as he pushes SK Telecom back. Position reverse onto Easy in immediate pool. And here comes Marin over the top with that onslaught of shadows. Madlife still trying to be a bit of a tank. There's another kill. For space, actually, an SKT pushed back. I really don't know about that recall from Tom right before that fight happened. CJ was just clearly positioned to keep going with that. Yeah, and you have to be very careful, of course. Tom didn't have his ultimate up to stick around in that fight. They are going to be Still. punished with a tower and a blue buff loss, however. And Marin a bit late on the TP again, actually. A little bit, yeah. Coming into that fight, Easy Hoon had a Flash Ghost engage over the wall right there to quickly pick up the ambition kill, but retreat quite fast enough afterwards. And considering it was a 4v4 with ambition down, neither jungler there. Yeah. They do get they do get a little bit punished. So CJ is starting to get a, a fairly decent lead now. Space actually able to pick up his frozen heart off of uh, that fight. Well, actually, no, he picked it up just before that fight, I believe. Yeah, really fast. Yeah. Really fast Frozen Heart, actually, but yeah. against the composition that SKT is running with Hecarim and, and Sivir, and Sivir just picking up the Infinity Edge right now, still not going to be very close to any kind of armor penetration. He's going for the tankiness as opposed to the damage. I think that CJ is just happy with where they are right now, happy with their lead, and they want to just continue stretching this into the late game. Shy is still continuing to farm as much as he can, and SKT is finally going to get their first turn of the game, it looks like. We'll see if CJ can continue to push things here. The gold lead's still not that much. Oh, Tom getting poked really high, hard by Coco. Coco's starting to put out some very scary damage. Yeah, especially with that blood boil. Yeah. Been ramping up his attack speed. <laughs> you have to be very careful about how you deal with that. Now, they're trying to get Bang in here because he has the best wave clear from range yep. into the mid lane, and they took the bottom turret. So SK Telecom, very serious about defending the tier two. Warren's looking at this brush right now, wants to clear the ward out of it. They have a pink, but he's not going to have time. Shy following right up right there using the twin bite from Shivana. Well, CJ's gotten to the point now that we've seen them get into a lot lately. That turret getting very, very low, where they can just keep aggressively pushing that little tiny lead that they get and just kind of blow everything wide open. This use of the Azir turret is really, really good, too, because it's allowing them to 1-3-1 right now effectively and very safely. Uh, probably Tom will have to burn his ult on the next wave if CJ keeps this up, although CJ may back off as the turret dies. Yeah, they will. Yep. So barely holding on to that tier two. But in a close game like this, it makes a world of difference. So CJ retreating for now, but not too far. Oh, they tried to go in onto Easy Hoon there. There's the ult onto Easy Hoon. Wow, Mad Life getting very aggressive, but where's the follow up? Not a lot of it right now for CJ. I think maybe there's a bit of miscommunication there. They really want this tier two. Yeah, they'll get it right about now. Yep. And meanwhile, up in top, that turret a little bit vulnerable as well, too. CJ is so good at pushing advantages in this meta. Now they're coming around, too. Yeah. Take out one more tower. Well, it's amazing what CJ's been able to do with a relatively small Tom lead early on. Tom's going to just go in. Wow, gets completely caught. Nice, a zero. And Coco's going to pick up that kill. You can't do that. You just have, no, to, you can. you just have <laughs> to ult them away from the turret. Don't try and be fancy. 
That was a solo queue hero move right there yeah. from Tom. Just you can't throw do that. your ult out to buy time for your team to show up and help push out the wave. Instead, they get a very uncontested kill onto Tom. And easy hoon here, but SK Telecom really having a lot of trouble. All their wave clear except for Sivir is melee range. And with this big, big zoning potential from CJ Entis, they're uh, having some trouble keeping their turrets alive. And now that is spread to a little bit over 3K, about 3.5K gold advantage. Yeah. And CJ picking the perfect time to go back and shop and head over to the oh, Dragon. Hello. Well, Marin manages to smite away that red buff before Mad Life gets there. Yeah, unfortunately, without the Onslaught of Shadows, don't think there's going to be a way that they want to fight this dragon. Yeah. Or second dragon of the game, it's only 22 minutes in. Not so big of a deal, but... Well, it's nice to have. And, you know, if, if you're SKT right now, it, giving CJ anything at this point is pretty dangerous. The Bang's also been forced to take the static shiv, I think, purely for the wave clear, but that means that his damage is going to be lower against a team that is already going to have quite a bit of armor. And yes, the static shift does magic damage, but it's not, the damage output isn't quite as good in the late game in, a, say, a Phantom Dancer. Well, do you think he wants to go into, like, a last one pretty soon, too? Wow, Mad Life actually with a play on to Marin. Marin getting a bit low. There's the ult from Ambition. Got and Easy Hoon. Hoon and Bank coming from behind. Coco uses that as zero ult, but SKT in a pretty good spot right now. Won't stop Space from getting a kill, though. Shy trying to get in on the Bank. They're going to have to settle for Easy Hoon for the moment. Going to pool, but not going to be able to. Well, he actually is with this flash. All right. Easy Hoon manages to get out. Tom didn't use his ult before he died either. I That's guess so. Part of the difficulty of this composition is knowing when to use those disruption ults like Onslaught of Shadows and like the explosive cask. Yeah, Wolf used his. It's, it's, do a whole lot. it's really hard because you have to get that damage down. And as you noted during Champ Select, though, if you use them in quick, incorrectly, it is hard for Vlad to get that AoE. The uh, Hemoplague kind of have to open up with that in a way. Yeah, honestly, that's kind of the weird part about this comp is I feel like Easy Hoon's really sort of compelled, and we saw him try to do it in that fight too, to come in from the flank, be the major engage, and then just try to get out. Well, fortunately for him, with Sivirolt and Ghost, he actually can get some pretty nice flanks down. Yeah. And I think his team fight positioning has been good overall, but it's not stopping CJ from really opening up a, a larger and larger lead this game. And, Tom's had a couple deaths now where he hasn't been using that explosive cask in an optimal fashion or at all. Yeah, I think we might see Bengi come back in after this one as we see Marin take down the top turret. I mean, Tom is good, but this is this is the most high-pressure situation he's ever played in by far. And uh, that was a question of playing Tom as well. Is yeah. He hasn't been in a match that mattered yet. When he, right. Even when he played against GE, low pressure situation. It, the result of that match, whether it went to SK Telecom or went to GE, was irrelevant in the standings because right. everything has already been decided. And against IM and Samsung, you just expect SKT to roll over those teams. So this is Tom's first performance in the booth where you know, it's do or die right here in the playoffs, and they put the confidence in him, but he has not been playing particularly well on this Gragas, that's for sure. Yeah. I think we're going to see Bengi and Faker come into this next one. Game's not over yet. It could still go either way, but CJ with uh, enough of an edge that, uh, you know, judging on how they've been playing their last matches, you'd think they'd be able to close it out. Oh, SKT setting a trap, though. Or thinking about it, and then not setting a trap. <laughs> so many wards for yeah. CJ. It's a very methodical pressure on these turrets. It's more of the same, more of what we've been seeing them do a lot of in the second half of the season. Here comes Marin. Oh, Marin coming in from behind with that home guard, going to try to make a big engage here. Gets slowed up with that position reverser immediately, though. CJ with a nice disengage. There's a good ult from Coco, keeping Easy Hood away. He's going to go back in anyway and pop that Hemo playing onto two people. Whoa, Mad Life caught Bang there. Bang could be in a bit of trouble, but no, Wolf makes it happen. Meanwhile, Marin manages to get in the back lines and take out Coco, now going in onto space. Ambition, and there comes Shy over the wall, turning it around. A couple kills. SKT very low. Shy's not done yet. There's the double. Will he get the triple on the easy unit? He dives the turret. There's the pool. Space chasing as well. Goes on to bank. Triple. Will it be a quadra? It will. Quadra kill. It could be a penta. He could get the penta against Marin, but it doesn't look like it taking too much turret damage. No, he wants it. He wants it so bad. He's getting low though. Marin denies it. Oh man, and now going in after Ambition, he's gonna get a double kill. What is this game? 
<laughs> okay, a little bit too pentakill crazy for CJ there. <laughs> Still, I mean, you can see how much of a threat these smite top laners are yeah, in the no late kidding. game. And let's check that one out again. I mean, they, they have five people. They know it's a 5v4. Shivana's TP is down, so they really want to engage this. Watch Bang's flash right here. Coco gets tied up by the tornado. Coco immediately running out. But Marin picking one up, and they're trying to finish this before we see Shy get here. A bit of an overcommitment from SK Telecom, though. Not enough knowledge, so Shy gets a fantastic ult in. SK Telecom over over committing to that. They should have been happy with the Coco kill and the relief and pressure and tried to make uh, probably a turret play from that point, especially in mid lane. But instead, they get a bit of greedy. Huh. Wadra kill for Shy, and then actually three kills in total for Marin over the course of this fight with the double at the end. Well, Marin played great under the turret at the end there. He knew Shy was getting a bit greedy, and he really took advantage of that, and it got him another two kills. Uh, SK Telecom, I, I think, really did overcommit to that to that fight, though. They had an advantage, wanted to use it, got some benefit out of it, and they still could have taken that Tier 1 turret in the mid lane, yeah. but instead waited for Shy, who is getting absolutely massive right now and went into pretty dangerous position on the map. That said, Shy's Shivana ults have been incredible this game. Yeah. You know, Marin got uh, quite a bit of gold out of that engage, too. He's up to 4-1-1 now, and... Honestly, the lead for CJ really hasn't grown in a while now. Yeah, the issue here for SK Telecom is that their their carry, their their uh, AD carry is much more vulnerable. Meanwhile, Coco is more vulnerable between the Vlad and the Azir. Right. So, what's going to be really interesting is who can kill whose weak carry or vulnerable carry faster. Well, denied. <laughs> <laughs> Not going home yet. Gonna have to run for it minute until the next dragon comes up and SKT could try to tie up the dragon count as well but they're going to have to get through CJ's wards first and that is not going to be easy. Yeah, Coco's build this game is very interesting too. Not going for the stinger. We've seen we've seen some of the Korean Azirs really move away from that build, but with right. the Nunu you get the attack speed anyway and just going for that pure AP. Coco will be in a very good position once he gets his Zonia's Hourglass. That's going to solve a lot of his problems. Meanwhile, Bang, not really close to getting items that are going to help him stay alive. He still doesn't even have any lifesteal. And Shy with the Gromp buff. We are at 5.7, so it's going to be a little less painful. Yeah. But, and Thornmail. It's going to be, it's going to be rough for Bang here. Oh, Shy manages to take down that top turret, and there's really nothing Marin can do. Bang's going to have to get Blade on, on Sivir this game, I'm pretty sure, just considering CJ's tanky, tanky composition. Yeah, it would be nice to have that. And it looks like CJ should be able to claim this dragon without any trouble at all. So this will be dragon number three now for CJ, and... You know, we're seeing more of what we've seen a lot in the last month or two, where CJ just is really the kings of the dragon pit. Nobody's able to take that from them. Yeah, number three. Yep, three said, to one. It's pretty late, actually, for three dragons, so at the very least they have some time. Oh, shy, shy. big ult onto a three people there. Mad Life running up, gets knocked back, though, before his anchor can connect. Snowball, though, onto Tom. Can they continue to chase here? SKT on the run. CJ may just go after Baron here. Yep. Uh, nope. you think they, so? bar, they can at least try and force a bait or something I like that. I was wondering, yeah. Looks like they don't have adequate vision. They're not comfortable with that. They're just going to take the red buff. But they All knew right. Marin's TP was down, so they tried to force the engage. Couldn't get anything. SK Telecom just backing right out of that one, taking the smart play. But they'll lose a red buff for it. Yeah, well, this does give CJ a chance to uh, get a couple... I guess they're not going to get a couple wards up on the way out, but they can go back and clear wards around Baron if they'd like to. CJ really not over committing to much this game. Yeah, they're yeah. playing it out very safely. Very conservative. Yeah. Hmm. The one thing they did over commit to was trying to siege that turret without Shy's TP up in the, in the top side. And they, but they actually came out of that <laughs> ahead. Yeah, it ended up working out. Kind of a mistake leading to SK Telecom's mistake. Would have worked out really well if Shy had uh, gone too crazy trying to get that Penta kill. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron again, king of CJ's Gromp. Yeah. Well, CJ 
playing so conservatively right now that they might have a Fox News sponsorship after this game. <laughs> Well, we'll see if they play Ari. I think that'll be the <laughs> that'll seal the deal. <laughs> it certainly could. So, vision control uh, around Baron is against CJ's. Sonya's now done for Coco. It's going to make him feel a lot more comfortable in the back line up against this Hecarim. And it looks like it will be. We'll see if it's going to be the Bloodthirster or the Blade. But you can see right now, Bang really not doing. No, I think you gotta Watch go with the blade here. Oh, you got a nice crit there. Yeah, but still, blade is good. Wow, space nearly got in range for position reverser, not opting to use it there. Ambition moving towards that frozen heart as well. Went for a lock at first. That's a bit curious. Hmm. Actually, well, there is a decent amount of magic damage coming out of SKT from Easy Hoon, I suppose. A yeah. little bit from Tom. That Marin's ult too, but hmm. it's. Yeah, I think you still you got to be mostly concerned about the Hecarim and the and the Sivir. Yeah. Well, for now, everything kind of quiet here. Top lane showdown right now as we right. see our top laners having the most money in the game out of anybody. Well, welcome to the top smite meta, Monty, <laughs> where you can go in and you can be a top laner and you can be a jungler at the same time. Why limit yourself to one, just one position? That's right, yeah. See, I've been trying to be uh, support and carry like this entire time. But smite doesn't work for me. <laughs> you gotta, oh, build, well. you gotta build, build challenging Smite on Nautilus <laughs> early, though. That's the thing. That's Get your Skirmisher Saber and then just all in the AD carry with the Smite. Then you can start uh, counter jungling after you kill them, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> I'm gonna do that now. <laughs> I've created a oh, monster. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mara going into a very late Trinity Force, mm. choosing to build tanky tanky this game. But he's going to need that damage. Yeah, getting a bit of late game damage certainly is not going to hurt SK Telecom against this super durable team from CJ Antis. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if SKT can come back from this one, though. They'd have to catch somebody out because CJ, they're just. They're too damn tanky now. Yeah. Uh, this Sivir, I, I fear for Bang's life. Should well, be. CJ really knows at this point, too, that all they need to do is just play it out safely. You know, they don't need to take any risks. Just keep methodically pushing and wait for the opportunities to come to you, you know, when Dragon spawns. Which will be pretty soon, in minute 30. As we see the split push from Shy. Shy has been such a monster on Hecarim and Shibana. Yeah. So how well he played against Janair, and it's the same thing here tonight. Yep. There's a little bit of warding from SKT at least. Hmm. All right, so after all that action, now, now these teams are like, whoa, wait, wait, wait a second. We have to actually just dial it back a little bit. All right, here a bit he comes. More relaxed. <laughs> Look out. Here comes the tiny amounts of damage on each player. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mad Life coming in though, trying to tip the scales perhaps. Or not. Well, all of CJ coming down to rotate into that bot lane. Space not there, pushing up the mid lane right now. So CJ can't quite fight it because Bang is going to get there a little bit quicker. Mar losing out of that trade really wasn't great. He does have a target ward in the river that he could try and teleport on if he wants to, but That's there's true. no Sivir. Well, he's going back to get home guard. He's got it now. He's gonna wait. They, they may try and fight this one right before the dragon. Ah, yep, there's the teleport. Marin starting to come in behind, and if they can get this and get the dragon, that's exactly what SKT needs. Here we go, coming from behind right onto Coco. Coco ults Marin back into the team, though. He's safe for now. Shy trying to disrupt as well. Bang, untouched as of yet. Space looking pretty good. Turn your round onto Easy Hoon right now. CJ, the siege continues from them, and they will get the turret. Space zoning out Easy Hoon so well. Huge. Space was the hero of that fight. He prevented Easy Hoon from getting anywhere close to doing AoE damage, yeah. even though he popped that that uh, that ghost early. Incredible choke control from Space during that team fight. Really, really well done. And that's going to get them a turret and a dragon and probably the game. Uh, it's dragon number four, and now, now is the time when you're like, all right, it's going to be really difficult for SK Telecom to have a chance to bring this one back. Yeah, and you know, 
Easy Hoon could have potentially flashed oh, into that one. Here we go. A little bit of fighting going yeah, on again. Yeah, Shai's right there. SK Telecom up, and CJ may be able to close in on them. Marin running away, might have to alter over the wall to escape. And there's the ult getting knocked up by Madlife. Ults over the wall again. Can they catch him? That's pretty tough. Shy going in, though. Bang, getting a lot of auto attacks in, but still not doing a ton of damage. On that tanky Shy, there's a flash snowball from Ambition really wants it, gonna ult slow down Wolf. Wolf in big trouble, getting very low. He will go Shy. down. Coco with a kill there as well. Shy just not allowing SKT to get away. Shy's back. He's found his home. This meta is for him. He is. The carry top is back. Tanky slash carry. Might not be Jax, but it's pretty good. Yeah, and as I was saying, that last team fight, at a certain point, maybe if you're Easy Hoon, you actually try and flash into that one or flash the wall or something. Yeah. Because you can't just allow yourself to get totally zoned out of the fight by an Urgot. It's perfect for Urgot. He wants to, he can only hit a single target, so he's maximizing his damage. Meanwhile, that Vlad is just hurting. Only having a little bit of armor, and with all that pen coming in from Space, who now has a GA on top of everything else. Probably Black Cleaver is the last item here. Uh, Bang did finally pick up the uh, Blade of the Rune King. It's too late. Uh, even in that last fight, too, we could see that Bang was trying to deal damage to Shy, but Shy's damage return with the Thorn Mail was so huge that yeah. they were taking about even damage in terms of percent of their HP. Really, really hard for Bang to do anything at the moment. Yeah, well, Shivana just eats 80 carries alive, too, at this point in the game. And so. Marin set him up in a situation with the last item, Trinity Force, where he has to farm up a lot uh, before he gets that item, and he's got yeah. no power in between to buy those little items with a full inventory. You know, this is your pick for Coco, too, has been so smart, and he's been playing it so well in that He's been waiting with that ult. They know Marin's going to come into flank, and when he does, he just gets pushed out of the way. Yeah, and same with easy. Oh, here we go. Sivrol pop. They're going to try to go in. Space position reverser actually switches with Marin to get him back in position. Madlife goes back in on the bank. Shy comes in, doesn't hit anyone with his ult, but he's still a huge threat. Marin going to get taken out in the back lines, and now CJ can begin to chase. Here we go. Azir coming up as well. Ambition can't flash snowball anyone this time, but they can turn on Baron. And right there, too, the Banshee's Veil actually blocked the Gragas ultimate, so they couldn't eliminate Shy from that fight. And Marin got caught into the back line after going in. It was kind of a desperation engage, I think, for SKT. Well, Space was so ready for it. Marin tried to come from behind, and Space was like, no, no, let me put you back with your team here. Let me switch this. Very good reaction on the All right. battle from Space. CJ has uh, some damage onto them from dealing with this Baron. SK Telecom, this is their last chance. They have to do something here, or the game is pretty much over. Baron low, Tom, he's got Smite. He's in position to try to steal this one. Comes in, doesn't quite get it. Gets caught immediately with that position reverser. Goodbye, Tom. Meanwhile, Shy diving all the way in the back lines of SKT. Easy Hoon was in mid lane. He wasn't even going to be a part of that anyway. They were able just to get Easy Hoon and Marin out of every single one of these fights. Uh, Bang died in that fight too, apparently. Coco's Emperor's Divides have been quite good. Yep. And CJ will barrel through to the first win in this series. Well, divide and conquer indeed from CJ. They did a, a great job of making sure that SK Telecom never really got any synergy out of their compositions. And here we go, Tom and Bang still down for 20 seconds and with the turrets dying that fast. I don't think there's anything they can do to stop it. Marin coming in, Ambition just ulting to keep people away. There's some knockups. Marin coming through. Madlife takes a lot of damage from the turret. He may go down, but Easy Hoon's so low life anyway. That turret's still up, though, and CJ is actually going to get forced back for the moment. Oh, but the minions! Will the Janna Shield be enough? No, not quite. And that next tur Nexus turret still goes down. Marin harassing CJ as they back away. So it's not over quite yet, but... You can't imagine yeah, there's going to be a lot that's going to stop CJ after they come back from this empowered recall. As one final purchase should be enough. Looks like Coco yep. wants a Luden's Echo. Who his, doesn't? As his final item. That needlessly large rod. And yeah, this, uh, this should be pretty over in favor of CJ Antis. We'll yep. see if SK Telecom is going to sub in Faker or the second game of this series. But doesn't Luden's build out of a uh, Blasting Wand in 5.7? Did they make that change? I believe I was just looking at that today, yeah. I, now I'm like doubting myself, but we'll see. Oh, Marin getting poked so hard for Coco. Trying to go in. 
Monty's looking it up. Quickest research skills at the casting desk as CJ pushes ahead down the mid lane. They changed it in Twisted Tree Line. Oh, okay, all right, like, I misled that. I, I don't right. think they're going to build a 120 AP item out of a, out of a blasted one. No, it was down to 100. Ah, but uh, that's again, also Twisted for, Tree Line. For yeah. Twisted tree line. Yeah. Oh, well. There go my hopes of getting it easier on support. <laughs> Well, CJ deciding to push up the mid line now. And SK Telecom, really not much they can do about that. There goes the second inhibitor. And CJ just going to be able to methodically push this one to a victory here in game number one. And it's a best of five, so we got a lot of games to go yet. SKT coming in, going on to Coco Marin over the top. There's old position reversal use immediately. Wolf actually takes out Coco. Space still able to do a lot of damage. There goes the Nexus. CJ Antis takes game one in style. Four dragons to one. Really looking good. Ten turrets at the end to three. Yeah, very commanding win from CJ. Yep. And he showed how hard very they good. can push those advantages again. A little slower than the Jin Air games. A little more cautious this time oh. around. Against a stronger opponent, though, too. Yeah, that is that is true. Shy coming up big with some of those fights. A little bit sloppy from both sides in that first game. But SK Telecom, especially Tom, I mean, you got to know when to use that Gragasol just to push people off towers yeah. and buy time for the rest of your team to get there, get it for the wave clear.